Okay, good morning and um, welcome everyone. Uh, now we've got the holding slides down. Uh, glad to have you on board um, for this uh, NHT webinar on offset inspection with me, Andy Wars, and uh, the main attraction, Philip Rollerhead, who's up there on the screen in front of you today. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I really appreciate you taking time away from your school and setting to be with us. Um, this is the this is the webinar version, the short version, uh, to give you a taster and, and uh, hope you enjoy it and uh, I hope it inspires you to, to learn more. Um, we've been running courses like this for a year now, um, so we're still doing online uh, and certainly will be till the end of the summer, so thanks for your feedback. Um, we're looking this week at uh, how to reduce the stress and effort that uh, uh, you face when an officer in inspection calls. Um, how to uh, update your understanding of school improvement strategies and uh, all the latest up to date information as far as we know it from Ofsted and the DfE uh, on what Ofsted currently does and doesn't want you to do uh, uh, and what that means for the uh, coming summer term um, and what indeed will happen uh, come September when we understand that uh, graded inspections will start again. As far as I know, well, that's what it was last time I ran this course, and Philip will correct me and tell me what, what has changed since then. Um, so this is this is the taster version of the course. We've got running the full course on the 16th of June, um, so, so make an opening diaries for that. I'll just say a few words about Philippa and a couple of housekeeping points, uh, and I'll leave you, leave you to her. Um, Philippa's got uh, over 30 years experience in education at senior leadership levels. Um, she's an experienced head of English and was vice principal of a large sixth form college in the Greater Manchester area. Uh, she heads up a pupil referral unit and a secondary alternative provision school. And uh, she does training on this, uh, uh, has done training also for us for a few years now. Uh, and other subjects including safeguarding, uh, financial viability and multi-academy trust structures. So uh, what Philippa doesn't know isn't really worth knowing in my experience. Um, housekeeping, I won't say much, you know how it works. Um, your name will be visible on screen, so uh, whatever you've chosen to call yourself today, people will be able to see that, that's just how Zoom works. Um, we've got a chat function, um, which I can see we've already put, please use this chat function to ask any questions. So um, as Philip is going along, if you want to drop any chat, just say hello, say hello to us, to each other, um, uh, or, or more questions that, that Philip can then pick up or, or we will we'll look at as well uh, while Philip is presenting. Please do, and obviously we'll have a poll at the end. Um, but that's all I'm going to say. I shall hand you over to Philippa, who's going to tell you all the latest and everything you need to know about Ofsted. So, Philippa, uh, that's, <laughs> that's given you a challenge. Off you go. Okay, thanks very much, Andy. That's great. Thanks. Thanks for the intro. Right. I'm just before I share the slides, I'll just um, give you a little give, give you a little update, really, on um, where we are and where this information comes from. So, um, in Andy's introduction, he um, told you that I've worked for the NAHT for quite a long time now as a trainer and I've been a school improvement advisor for um, six years now working alongside the NAHT delivering training. Um, so just for your information, um, I'm not an active Ofsted inspector, I can't be as a school improvement advisor, but I am working with active Ofsted inspectors who feed information through to me. So the information you're going to hear today is the latest information that I have. And I actually think it's probably going to be the final point before we start again in September. So I, I don't anticipate that there'll be a lot of changes from this point. I think what we know now is where we're going to be. Um, so that's quite an important point to make. The other important point for me to make before I start is that this is a this is a short webinar to give you a taster of Ofsted update. So I've really focused on what the structure will be like in September. Um, but it's important to take on board that um, when I'm talking about Ofsted, I'm really talking about preparing your school for visitors. And those visitors are often their, their parents, their governors, far more frequently than they are Ofsted inspectors. So even through this short training and certainly through the long training on the 16th of June, the focus is very much on day-to-day -day school improvement in order to ensure you are ready for visitors. And I just think that's an important point to take on board before we start. So if you'll just bear with me a moment, I'm going to share my screen and get myself ready and then we'll launch straight into the slides. Okay, so hopefully you can see that okay. I'm just going to move this window out of the way so I can see all my slides. Perfect. Okay, so let's begin. I've got lots to do in 45 minutes. So um, just to reiterate, um, those are my contact details. Obviously, if there's anything 
comes up during this webinar, feel free to make contact with me, ask me specific questions about your setting. Please drop specific questions into chat as well because I'm definitely going to finish five minutes before the end, pick up any questions and have an open chat with anybody who wants to come off mic and speak specifically about their school. So um, please feel free to do that. So what is the aim of this taster session? Well, what I'm aiming to do this morning is to update your understanding of the types of strategies that you can use to maximise pupil outcomes, communicate effectively and be prepared for external visitors. And part of that is making sure that you understand what the expectations are of Ofsted um, from this uh, summer term and also from September onwards. So I'm going to bring you up to date with the latest information and really, most importantly, um, prepare you to understand what Ofsted doesn't want you to do because for all the years I've been in education and been having Ofsted inspections, it's the time I would say where there is the least paperwork that there has ever been, the least need for um, a lot of manual preparation. It's all about professional dialogue and, and that's an important point to get across because it's about reducing workload in that sense. So um, throughout this webinar and during the full course, you'll be supported to understand the education framework and the new handbook, which has been updated over the Easter holidays, which is what I'm going to bring you up to date with in a moment. Ensure your self-evaluation self is accurate. Understand about your strategic planning and how you can be successful. Develop clear and measurable success criteria for improvement and ensure all of your staff and governors feel well prepared and your pupils feel well prepared for any visitors that may come to the school, including inspectors. So let's look at the latest update. So what do we know from September 2021 onwards? Well, we know that in September 2021, normal infection visits resume and inspectors will consider available external data throughout the inspection. However, they will be mindful of the age of the data, and we know now that that is you know, two years out of date, especially around statutory assessment and qualifications when making judgments. Inspectors will not expect or accept internal data from schools, either instead of or in addition to published data. So let's just have a think about that for a moment, because in those last two bullet points, there's quite a lot of information to take on board there. So there will be an eye on the IDSR, even though it is two years out of date. You will be able to have professional dialogue with the inspectors about what has happened in that interim period, where you are, and if you have taken on any school improvement in that interim period and what impact it has had. But you can't expect the inspectors, according to this last bullet, to take any of your internal progress data and use that to replace the information in the IDSR. And I think that the reason that they're putting that statement in so clearly is because they want to be absolutely clear that their expectation is that during the pandemic, you have not, you have managed to keep school going, you have managed to keep the curriculum going to a certain extent, but you have not been able to put your school improvement plan into, in, into practice. So their expectation is that you tell them about what's happened in that interim period, but you will be at that standing position. And really it's up to you to think about that professional dialogue if you do feel you've made movement forward and lots and lots of schools do through all, for all sorts of different reasons around communication with parents and pupils, around their understanding of safeguarding, around their ability to um, engage with pupils um, virtually, they feel they've made progress and they've had time to look at their curriculum and improve their curriculum. So it's about logging that and having a professional dialogue about that. As I said, there are some things here that clearly, if you want to ask me specific questions, drop them into chat or we'll have a, a, a discussion at the end. So what do we know about the time frames? Okay, well, the time frames, um, interestingly, I'll take you through this slide, then I'll tell you the reality. So outstanding schools, um, that's maintained in academy schools, will be inspected now within six years. So that means that um, there's two different types of inspections for outstanding schools from, from this coming September. Schools that were last inspected before September 2015 will get an initial Section 5 inspection. That means that that first inspection that you have 
the, the inspectors will be able to change your grade. It's a full inspection. Schools that were last inspected after September 2015 will get a Section 8 inspection. That's the same as a good school would get. And that means that you will have a window of opportunity to improve should your grade have dropped below outstanding. Or you will have a window of opportunity to consolidate good and um, within a two year window you will be inspected again with a full section five inspection with the opportunity to either settle at good or maintain your outstanding so there's there's a slight difference there if um after september 2015 if it is clear that your school is still outstanding the letter will tell you that your school is still outstanding but you will still have a full inspection within the next two years after that Good schools are maintained every, are, are going to be inspected every four years, requires improvement within 30 months. Inadequate schools within three years, maintained nurseries, non-maintained special schools and new schools. Um, first two within 30 months, the last one within three years of opening so change there. And no changes with residential special schools who are annually and residential provision of boarding every three years. So that's the published information. The reality is clearly, just as we are all two years um, in, in limbo as such, um, so are Ofsted. And they have um, a legal obligation to inspect all good schools within five years. That is their legal obligation. So they are going to start to look at schools in this summer term who are good and are coming up to that five year window. And I think that that rule will continue throughout the next academic year. So for good schools, your window will open in four years, but your window will remain, your Ofsted potential to be inspected could remain open until the end of the fifth year. You must be inspected by the end of the fifth year. And until they've caught up, they are going to use that opportunity and they are going to, they're going to push forward. Um, they're going to stick to the time frame for, out, for outstanding, for requires improvement, for adequate, inadequate and for residential. But with good, they will stretch that window to the fifth year. So just take that on board if you're currently a good school. So what will inspectors look at from September 2021? Well, they will look at... Um, they will look at the leadership of the school. They will look at how you coped within that um, pandemic period. They'll want to understand how school leaders supported the school community through the pandemic. For example, understanding how remote education was put in place and monitored, how teachers and support staff were prepared for remote education, how vulnerable pupils were kept safe and prioritised for face-to-face -face education, how you kept your parents up to date, how you engaged them with developments, um, your staff absence and how that impacted on your running of the school and how you have promoted um, your staff and pupils' well-being. So again, bear in mind what I said right at the beginning of this. This is about you considering these things. Now, you might be the type of, type of school that prefers to sit down with all the staff, have a really good brainstorming session on everything that you did during the pandemic period, all the positives, all the good practice, and write it down. But if you do that, you will be using what you've written to um, facilitate a professional dialogue with inspectors. They won't want to have tons and tons of documentation. They will want to have a professional dialogue where you are referring to things because you can't keep everything in your mind. But remember that all of that is your internal information for your eyes only. So they'll want to talk to you about safeguarding and attendance. They'll want to understand with you how safeguarding arrangements have changed over time due to the pandemic and how school leaders have made sure that they remain effective. And there will be a lot of focus on that. They will want to talk to you about how different children may have risen up to be um, considered to be vulnerable and how you identify those children. They'll want to talk to you about how you kept in contact with the most vulnerable and how you ensured that they remained engaged in their, in their curriculum, in their academic studies and how you ensured their safeguarding. So the DSL team should expect a slightly different discussion with that dialogue about the changing picture during the pandemic. 
and inspectors will discuss attendance patterns with school leaders to understand how the pandemic specifically affected the individual school. So they are very mindful and I, and I um, keep up to date with them all the time and one of the last conversations I had with inspectors following their latest training is that they are very mindful about the period that we went into tier systems and that some schools that were in the higher tiers had uh, far far more um, volatile attendance than those that were in the lower tiers so that all they want to do with this is they want to understand how the pandemic affected your attendance and clearly part of that dialogue will be how you utilized all the things available to you to manage attendance and ensure everybody that was going to attend did attend so they're not going to take that attendance between March 2020 and March 2021. It won't impact the judgment of the school in any way. They are just interested to talk to you about your strategies and how you utilize them. And just as we, as attendance in any inspection at any point, will really not necessarily be about the percentage, but about the percentage attendance, but about how you managed your resources. So how you ensured that you stayed in contact, um, that you sent all the letters home that you could do, that you potentially, um, you know, used everything that you had available to you to ensure that children attended. And that's really what they want that professional dialogue to be about. So then to think about the phone call, because this is a very important part now of the Ofsted inspection, probably never been more important. And in the new framework, it quite clearly says that the time frame of 90 minutes may now be extend, extended to allow for greater dialogue before the inspectors come in so that they can be fully prepared around your health and safety, around your strategies for signing in, etc., and to understand how your school functioned during the pandemic. So what do you need to prepare for this phone call? Well, clearly, and I'm, I'm absolutely adamant about this, nothing you don't already have. This is another part of managing your workload and ensuring that you don't overthink and overdo. The feedback that I've had from the schools that were inspected under this framework prior to the pandemic quite clearly said two things to me. One was make sure you know how to use speakerphone because the, the best way to save yourself time is to have your team around you to hear the conversation firsthand. The second thing to take on board is don't overburden yourself with too much paperwork around you because you become distracted from the phone call. So instead of focusing on the person on the end of the phone and the professional dialogue that you're having, you're constantly looking at all these bits of paper around you and you become distracted. So one document that quite clearly um, details all of your your of your priorities for your school improvement as it stands at the moment and um, whatever stage that might be at because remember you haven't been able to do that for a while and um, if you're inspected very early on in September you still might not have had a chance to do that so whatever the point of school improvement your school improvement plan you are at and the progress that you have made and what actions you have in place. That's the document you need in front of you to facilitate a professional conversation. So they want to ensure with you that your school improvement plan is clear, precise and updated with progress. They want to make sure that you are focusing on the things that they think you should be focusing on that were highlighted in your last IDSR. So the school, the inspection and um, the Ofsted a dashboard will tell them their lines of inquiry. They're still going to pick up on those and say, you know, where are you with these lines of inquiry that were in place prior to the pandemic? They want to make sure that you're, they'll be using the latest inspection handbook to ensure that they're managing the inspection correctly. So you need to be aware of that handbook. This is the document that I think is most underplayed in schools. This handbook is the book that inspectors use to ensure that they are trained fully in how to inspect. And this book tells you exactly what to inspect what to expect during an inspection, but it also gives you really valuable best practice advice about what an outstanding school looks like, what a good school looks like. So use those bullet pointed lists for outstanding good to uh, manage your school improvement. One of the most efficient ways I have of creating a school improvement plan is to take the outstanding criteria for every Ofsted um, leadership and management quality of education, take all the outstanding bullet points and go through them with um, green, amber or red and say, yes, we're, we're really strong on that. We need a bit more work on that. No, that's definitely red. And the red goes into your school improvement plan. If you do that for two or three years on, your, on the run, you get to a point where everything is green and you know nothing's slipping through the net. 
you know that you are covering everything. So it's a great way of managing your school, your own internal school improvement. And by doing that, you will automatically ensure that you are always Ofsted ready because you are aware of what the inspectors will be looking at and what is important to them. And then also use that draft inspection handbook, use that inspection handbook to draft a two day timetable. I think this is a great idea. It's something inspectors say to me, they really appreciate schools doing. Look at what inspectors want to look at. There's a very short, succinct, bullet pointed list in the school inspection handbook which quite clearly says what inspectors will want to look at during an inspection. There's no surprises here, nothing you won't already know, your full staff list, your attendance, uh, your timetable, everything that you would expect. But if you look at that, you will get a clear idea of what the, the activities that they want to do over the two days. So they will want to go into classrooms. They will want to be um, able to talk to the safeguarding team and that should be the first thing they do. They will want to be able to look at the single central record and the HR files, move around corridors, look at the playground, talk to governors, talk to groups of staff, whoever you want them to talk to, talk to groups of pupils. So why don't you draft a two day timetable that gives them a lots of time on the second day uh, for paperwork so that they can pull all their notes together. And then all they need to do during the telephone conversation is tweak that with you. You can share that with them. They can tweak it with you and you can agree the two day timetable. You are creating what Ofsted often say to me, the phrase they use is, is what they're looking for in this phone call is confidence. They're looking for people who understand what is expected of them, how to manage that, and what their two day timetable will look like, um, where, what, what they have, what their priorities are at the moment, what they've done to improve clear, defined, confident um, dialogue about their, where they are, where the school is currently. So that's the type of preparation you need to do for the phone call. And it really is all about thinking, jotting down where you are, updating your school improvement plan with actions and having a professional dialogue. During that phone call, you will also have an inspection planning discussion. So during the call, you will have a short inspection planning discussion and they will talk to you about your statutory duty to inform parents, nothing new there. Discuss your special educational needs and disability resource bases. Ask about pupils attending any off-site off -site alternative provision. Um, and they will visit that if necessary during the inspection. Discuss off-site units that support pupils with behaviour or attendance. Um, discuss nursery provision before and after school care, holiday clubs. So they want to know about all those extra things that you do. Invite you and the curriculum leaders to take part in lesson, ob lesson observations, lesson walks, um, and to observe the main inspection team meetings. Absolutely take that on board. You'd be foolish not to. There is nothing you will know immediately throughout the whole two days exactly where your school is up to if you fully engage with the process. They'll talk to you about arranging to meet relevant staff and governors and provide your school the opportunity to ask any questions or raise concerns. So that's what you should expect from that initial inspection planning discussion, which is part of the telephone call. OK, so before I move on to how does the current Ofsted process affect you, I just want to touch on this summer term. So I've talked to you about September 2021 onwards. What is happening in the summer term? Well, we now have a resumption of um, Ofsted inspections and they are site visits and they've resumed from the 4th of May, um, um, but they are prioritised. So they are prioritised for, in order, um, inadequate schools who require immediate monitoring inspections. And those monitoring inspections will look at um, the, the progress that you've made to date, they won't grade you, they won't judge you, they are looking to keep on top of things and ensure that everything is moving in the right direction. It will only trigger a full Ofsted inspection if during that monitoring inspection they find something that concerns them. They may then immediately come back with a full inspection. But on the whole, they are looking at inadequate schools to make sure that they are making the progress that they need to make. If you are a good school and you are coming up to your five year window, so if you're getting to the point where it is five years since your last inspection, you could be inspected in this summer term. So you'll know that. If you've got any questions about that, ask me um, 
in chat or at the end, but they are the only good schools that are going to be inspected. Those that are going to go over the five year window, which is why I said to you earlier, I believe that will carry on into September 2021 as Ofsted catch up. The only outstanding schools that will be inspected are those that request an inspection. So if you request an inspection because you believe that this is the perfect time for you to be inspected, quite know why you would do that but feel free to talk to me at the end if you think you're going to do that and um, then they will come out and do an inspection for you otherwise your inspections will begin in September 2021 with those that have been inspected the longest time ago so if you are I mean I've got some schools I work with as an advisor I work with schools all around the country I've got some outstanding schools that are 15 years in so you are going to be the ones that will be inspected first some of the schools that have um not been outstanding for that long may go over that six year window as Ofsted catch up. This is all about catching up during this during this period. So just to reiterate in this summer term from this period we're in now that's inadequate schools are going to be monitored. If you're coming up to 30 months and your requires improvement and you've been requires improvement twice then you may have a monitoring inspection. Good schools only if you're going to hit that five year window and outstanding schools only if you request it. So that's this summer period. So let's look at how the current Ofsted process affects you. So as I said, if you're an outstanding school, um, you will start proper unless you request an exemption from September 2021. I mean, it was planned from January, obviously that's been pushed back. And just to fully clarify that, um, you will get an initial section five or a section eight within six years. If you were inspected before September 2015, you will get an inspection five inspection. That's a full inspection that will change your grade if you are not still outstanding. If you are after September 2015, you will get a window to improve before your full inspection. If you are clearly outstanding, there is a possibility, and we're not sure about this yet, but if you are clearly outstanding with your section eight, you may go for another six years and then have a section five, or you may be given a two year window to maintain or improve from good if there were some elements of good and then have a full inspection two years later. I have to wait and see on that one, I'm not 100% sure. And neither are the inspectors, which is why um, that's still uh, to be clarified. So good schools, short inspections of good schools, we know they happen over two days. Unless you have fewer than 150 pupils on roll, then it's one day. This will give you more time to make sure inspectors have all the time that they need to gather the evidence. Remember, this is about moving around, particularly with this lack of IDSR and, and secure data. This is going to be about moving around. It's going to be about professional dialogue. It's going to be about talking to staff, governors and pupils. It's very much back to that hands-on feeling of what is happening in the classroom. What do the books look like? How did you manage the pandemic period? where are you against your school improvement plan very much about that practical element as opposed to the data and i think that we will have and um, somebody pointed out in the last course i did actually and i thought it was an excellent point to make that this is about us having an opportunity now for at least two years we have an opportunity to really focus on the children school improvement the curriculum because there is less emphasis on the data so make the most of that and really you know make the most of that two-year window um, of inspection where it's going to really be focused on your ability as leaders to improve the school rather than that focus on the data so a school judged good at its most recent inspection will normally receive a short inspection every four years remember that you have to be legally inspected um, within five years. So that is going to be the pushback that gives Ofsted time to catch up. You will automatically receive a full section five inspection if a risk assessment indicates your performance has deteriorated. That is going to be far less likely to happen because there is no ability to be able to risk assess um, with any security. And Ofsted are very clear about this. So most good schools will just get their Section 8 inspection because there is very little desk-based work you can do at the moment because the data isn't secure. If a school shows improved performance at its short inspection, then you will be given the opportunity to have a full inspection within one to two years and um, to say whether your school to see whether your school has moved up and made that final leap to outstanding. Similarly, if your school is um, shows to be good. 
um, but has elements of RI, then you will again be given that two year window to improve. So let me just bring that to life. At the end of your two day inspection, there will be a conversation and there will be three possible outcomes. You are good, it is a secure good, we will see you again in four years. You are good with outstanding features. These are the things you need to improve to make sure you are securely outstanding. You have the option for us to come back in one to two years to reinspect and see whether you are outstanding. You are good, but these elements are RI. Here are the things that you need to work on. We will come back within two years to do a full inspection and you will have the opportunity to, move, to ensure that those things have been improved on and you can remain good. And this is an interesting concept because this is really about your school um, being given the opportunity to stay good. And a lot of this is about finance. If your school drops to RI or below, then there is no doubt whatsoever that parents vote with their feet. And when parents vote with their feet, your pupil role drops. And by doing that, um, your finances suffer for a long time. So Ofsted are really giving you every opportunity to stay at good, maintain that standard within the local community. And that's what that is really about. Requires improvement, nothing has changed. You will be re-inspected within 30 months. And if you are um, inadequate, um, and there is a serious week and a serious concern, you will automatically be academised and moved into a multi-academy trust. So nothing has changed there. So I just want to talk to you very briefly about the curriculum focus, which is what you will need to be aware of if you're going to have any kind of inspection within this summer term and certainly something to think about for September. You should inspect, expect that there is a shift away from that internally produced data. There already was and even more so now there is less data. So inspectors will gather evidence of quality of education. They will move around your school. They'll want to know about your progress checks three times a year, why you've decided to collect assessment information, what you're drawing from it, how it informs your teaching and learning. They don't want to see it. They want you to talk to, they want you to, talk to them about it. They want to know how your progress data affects your teaching. They want to know what interventions you're putting in place from your progress data that ensure all children are moving forward. That is the key to a successful inspection. They'll want to know the extent to which your curriculum sets out the knowledge and skills, that's your curriculum plan, your intent, the way you teach and assess your curriculum, the outcomes for pupils. They'll want to know, and these are three pivotal points, what you do which is over and above the national curriculum, what you do is, which is bespoke to your local community, and how you prepare children for the next stage of their education. Think about your curriculum offer and what it says on your website. Have you got an opening statement, which is your curriculum intent, which covers those last three bullet points? What does your education do for children in your local community that other schools don't do? That's your curriculum intent. What does your PSHE programme do for your children? That is your cultural capital. Think about writing some paragraphs for your website that would tell everybody, including your parents, why your school is a great place for their children to be and what they will learn. That also helps Ofsted inspectors to understand your curriculum. It's a great tip and schools that have done it have been really positive about the impact. Okay, so those are the key elements that I want to talk to you about this morning. I'm just going to reiterate a few points with you. Um, and um, I'm really just what I want you to think about your, um, your curriculum and the work that you've done over this pandemic period. I want you to think about um, what it says on your website about your curriculum and how, it, how you could improve that offer to ensure that all visitors, including parents, are fully prepared um, for what your school does for their children. And then all visitors are fully aware of your curriculum and, and they understand it. And I want you to have a little think about your um, internal progress data, how you could communicate that effectively and how you could um, use that conversation to improve the Ofsted inspections that are likely to happen over the next two years, where there is less emphasis on the IDSR and more emphasis on what you're actually doing with the children of your, around your school improvement and what you would do around your curriculum. So if you enrol on the full course, 
um, which is on June the 16th, we will look at how to evaluate your curriculum offer. So we will do a huge amount of work on your curriculum offer and how to evaluate it, how to look at an amalgamated CEF and school improvement plan. So you're working from one document that says where you are, what you've got to improve, the progress that's been made, um, and that is all in one document that you can use to manage your school leadership and also to communicate with your governors. So it's your head teacher's report to governors as well. We'll look at the process of deep dives and of course they're incredibly important at the moment. Um, and uh, what I've found with deep dives is that um, certainly I'll give you the information when you do the full course on what a deep dive is and we share the deep dive questions with you as part of the pack. But what I found is incredibly um, useful for schools during this pandemic period is training schools on how to do their own deep dives so that that can be included in their own school improvement cycle. Um, because I found as a school improvement advisor that deep dives are one of the most useful parts of actually um, reviewing a school's teaching and learning and finding out where they're up to. It's tracking that one subject and its delivery across several year groups to see how the skills and knowledge in the curriculum plan really do build and really do sequence. That's how deep dive, that's what deep dives are about. It's about looking at how that happens. So we'll look at that in detail. Um, we'll think about your behaviour criteria and your pastoral programme and how that impacts on your children, how to prepare your leaders and governors and we'll look at all the questions that they're asked. Effective education improvement strategies. So I'll share with you the things that I've learned over the years that I think are best practice around school improvement and that help you stay in control. And then I'll share with you the things that Ofsted also think are best practice and that will always help you feel Ofsted ready. And we will really focus on safeguarding, which is a pivotal part of inspection. And safeguarding is the first thing that inspectors look at. So quite simply, what I do with that is I actually just take you through the journey from the moment the inspectors arrive on site to the point at which they finish the safe conversation with you so I talk you through that what is in effect an hour and a half two hours because if that goes wrong you can't be anything other than all right so that's everything that we talk about in the full course which as I said is on June the 16th so I've got I've left myself 10 minutes to take all of your questions and, and um, talk to you now which I think is probably the most useful part of this training so I'm just going to unshare my screen okay and I'm going to first of all look at chat. Please drop any questions um, into chat so, and then I will pick up any questions. So first of all, um, I'm just taking a question here from Joanne. So if a school was graded good in January 2020 um, and they were told this, that Ofsted will be back within 18 months, am I right in assuming we won't be? Absolutely, you are right in assuming that, Joanne, yes. Um, you were good in 2020. Um, now, you will be a higher priority um, because there was a possibility, you know, they said to you that they would be back within 18 months. So you were good with elements of RI and they said we will be back in 18 months to see whether you are going to be, if you've managed to make those improvements just as I described earlier. So when they resume in September 21, so you won't be inspected in this summer term, you're not a priority. But in September 2021, um, you will be on that priority list. So I would expect that you will probably have an inspection at some point in the autumn to spring term. And I know that's really vague, but I think there are other people that are going to be a higher priority than you. They must do the schools that have been um, inspected who are coming up to that five-year window because it's illegal for them to go over that five years. So you will be further away than them. So potentially you will be um, in um, spring term. It's perhaps my best best guess for you there. I know that's a bit for you. Um, I hope that helps, Joanne. Please don't think anybody wants to ask questions when I've been teased. Um, th this is being recorded, so you'll be able to download it from YouTube and Andy will tell you at the end how to do that. Oh, I think he's put that um, some information on there about the full course as well. So if you are good, but you know that a parent has made a recent complaint to Ofsted, are you more likely to be inspected nearer to the four-year window or the five-year window? Uh, you were inspected in 17, 18, 19, 20. 
2021-22. So your five-year window will be 2022. Um, it really depends whether that um, that complaint, um, what, how, how substantial that complaint is and if it's been substantiated. You are far more likely, Catherine, to be contacted by the local authority for some information about that complaint. And only if the local authority substantiate that complaint will it trigger a slightly earlier inspection. Otherwise, expect that, that you will sit within that five-year window. If a school was ju judged good in 16, will they legally have to inspect us by the end of the summer term? So, sorry, I have to count some fingers here. 16, 19, 20, 21, yes, you are going to be one of those five-year people. So, yes, you will expect that. You will be one of the people that comes within that June period. So, you should expect your inspection before that anniversary of the date that you inspected in June 2016. Okay, so... Um, how detailed should that curriculum map be on your website? Well, some of the best I've seen are, um, okay, let, the best way for me to describe that to you is some of the best I have seen are written for parents. So let's get that straight in our heads, first of all. They are written for parents and they're written in such a way as to say, um, if your child is coming to our school, this is the curriculum that we will offer you. This is what we will do for your children because you live in our local community. This is how we will prepare them for their secondary education, for their sixth form education, for their university education, whatever stage you might be at. These are the pastoral skills that we will give them. These are the opportunities that we will give them. Write it as if you're writing to a parent, that is, the, that is sufficient depth. That's how you should be writing it. And from that, inspectors can really gather um, what, you're, what you're unique about your curriculum. And that's all they really need to know. So final, um, final question here from Alison. We were RI in January 2019 and have been told by the LA that we were inspected this term. We were previously good. January 19. Interesting, January. Um, I don't think. Um, well, you'll be, you will be inspected within 30 months. So, um, but you've only had one RI inspection by the sound of it because you're telling me you were previously good. I think that, that you might be one of those schools that you need to have two RI inspections to be inspected in this summer term. So I think that the LA might have got that slightly wrong and that you will be in, you will actually be picked up in the autumn term of 2021. Um, if you like, Alison, if you email me, um, the information will be on YouTube. You can get my email from there. I will double check that with my inspectors and come back to you. But that is my understanding. Just want to be 100% sure with that, Alison. So I'd rather check it and email you personally. Okay, um, anybody want to ask a question directly before we finish? We've just got a couple of minutes. I'm not going to ask you a question, I'll just sort of pop up and say hello, Philippa, and give you, give your voice a break and perhaps give you a chance to have a swing, a swing of water while, while people are thinking about the questions. Um, yeah, I've, I've put up details of NHC's YouTube channel, by the way, so. Uh, if people click there on the link, uh, and we can we can send that link around to people with the with the with the slides as well. Actually, um, sorry, I'm getting really bad hay view. I'm getting quite bunged up. Um, but if you if you want to if you want to see uh, previous training and stuff, uh, it's all out there on the YouTube channel, and we'll put, we'll post this up uh, there at a later stage. Um, there is a question in. Yes, which you can see as well as I can. So I'll, I'll leave it to you. It's a, it's a really interesting question that, and and I think the answer to that is personally I would personally I would. Um, if you if you um, part of the pack when you come on the full course is that I will share with you the questions that Ofsted ask pupils, and what I really like to do, and I always rec I do this as an advisor, and I always recommend that um, schools do this is take the questions. Um, adjust them slightly to the age range of the child because they're very generic they're quite sh sharp questions actually and you always have to soften them for the primary sector take them and integrate them into uh, give them to all of your teachers and ask your teachers to use them as part of their teaching so asking a child can you show me the best work in your book to show me the, the thing you're most proud of show me what your teachers have asked you to improve and how you've done that um, and obviously this has to be softened for the primary sector um, show me show me where your teachers have told you how to improve and how you've worked on that all of those types of questions if you actually get your teachers to use those day in day out nothing's ever a surprise and the great thing about them is that they do help to in your school improvement cycle they do help to draw your attention to really good practice with your teachers and marking and books if you actually use the questions so I say yes use them all the time 
And a final question from Vicky. We were all right in November 18 and had a monitoring visit in September 19. Does our 30 months run from the full inspection? The full inspection, yes, that's right, Vicky. The monitoring visit, um, your 30 months runs from November 18. And clearly that's going to have been delayed for you. So, um, but again, if you've only got one RI behind you, if it's your first RI, I still expect that you will go into that autumn term because there is a big job. Ofsted have got a big job on their hands. They've got to get to those people who, have, who are going to be um, passing that five-year window. And any um, specific advice for timetabling inspectors' visits? Um, I think, think about all the things that are important to you. That's what I would say with that timetable. In the handbook, there is a list of things that they need to do. And you know those things. It's talk to governors, talk to staff, talk to pupils. Those are your key three core groups. Then you think who else you want to talk to. Is there a specific group of pupils you think have got a story? Is there a specific group of staff that you think, you know, particularly if you've got something that you think is a real strength? I'll give you an example. A school I work with has got an incredible curriculum about food education. They would be missing a trick if they didn't get a small group of staff to together to specifically talk about the food education and the impact it has on the children. So think about what's specific to you and put it in your timetable. It won't be taken out if you put it there. Okay, I think we've probably come to the end there and I've gone a minute Sorry. over. Could I just ask a question? Apologies. Um, just, just a question of, around the course. Is it only open to NHT members, NHT members or can anyone book? Not at all, Karen. Anyone can book on the course. Andy, I don't know if you want to give more information on that. Yeah, um, so I put a link in the chat um, for the uh, Eventbrite look. So uh, Eventbrite link to book on the course, uh, so 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 anyone can can book that way. Um, yeah, so so that's fine. Um, we just put a poll up. Um, so uh, I don't know if it's about you. It's in the way of your face, Philip. So let me just move that across. There. Um, so if you care, <laughs> if you care to fill in the fill in the online poll, that really help us. So let me know. Uh, that we're giving you what you need and being helpful to you. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Obviously, on the, the full length version of the course, uh, we've got more time to open things up and have breakouts and uh, for you to talk to other heads, which is a nice thing because it's a long time since we've been able to really meet and talk to people. Um, so the, the 12 inch three links of this version gives you all that, and that's coming up on uh, 16th of June. And as I put the link in there in, in the chat. Um, thank you so much, Philippa. Um, if you've got any questions for uh, Philippa, do drop us a line uh, here at NHT. Uh, best place to get us is events at nhc.org.uk. Um, have a look at our website for details of our wellness and protect program, uh, NHC membership, uh, other offers they change all the time. So have a look at the latest ones. Um, and if I can just plug a few uh, upcoming attractions, uh, many of which may feature Philippa again. Um, so as, as you know, 16th of June is the full length version of this course. Um, uh, next Monday, the 10th of May, we've got a course on early learning goals with Ruth Swales. Um, so if you're interested in, in, in the early years curriculum, join us for that. And on Thursday next week, uh, the 13th, safeguarding with Philippa. Um, so Philippa has touched on the importance of that um, as, as part of this, and we get a deeper dive into that. Uh, and one last thing, uh, I'm going to say Tuesday 18th of May, NHT's new and aspiring heads conference. So if you're a new head or an aspiring one or know someone who is, um, do, do let them know about that. It's uh, Tuesday the 18th of May and it's an all day online event. Um, so that's all I want to say. Thank you for dropping your questions in the chat. Uh, it brings it to life a bit. So thank you for, for people with, with, with their questions. I hope it's been useful to you. Um, if, it, if it's only scratched the surface and you want more, uh, then we have more. So, so get in touch and do that. Uh, and thank you again to Philippa for, for being with us and running us through the ever-changing moods of Ofsted. Um, so, <laughs> so that's enough for me, Philippa. Is there anything you want to say to, to take us out? Not at all. Thanks very much. Great to work with you all. Um, hopefully I'll see you again either um, over virtually or face-to-face -face from next year. And uh, take care and I'll yep, see you all soon. Thank you. Okay.